What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be talking about why Vivi's Powerpuff Girls Season 2 NFT collection will always be their most viable. But before we do this, if you enjoy this video then please consider dropping a like and subscribing if you're new around here. So what I'm going to be doing in this video essentially is doing a bit of a comparison between uh, the black and white uh, Batman Season 1 and the Powerpuff Girls Season 2 uh, because I believe the, this is considered, in my opinion, the, the rarest uh, because Black Man Black and White was the first ever release of NFT collectibles. But I believe Powerpuff Cartoon Network's uh, Season 2 will always be the most viable. Now, the main metric we're going to be looking at in this particular comparison uh, is the total minted. Uh, because this will give us an idea about how, behind why the value is so high right now. Because if you look at uh, Season 2's Donny, for example, and the Powerpuff Girls, this one here, they're ultra rare. There was only 150 minted ever within the existence of VV. So there will only ever be 150 uh, Donnies available. Now, if you look at the current price, this is why it reflects so highly in it. You know, you can't get a Donny on the marketplace right now for buy it now price. And that's what all these are, by the way. This is the buy it now price for the current date of the 17th of May 2021. You can't buy one outright for any less than $40,000. Now that's just simply because of how rare it is. And when we look at the Cartoon Network um, season two, as uh, sorry, the Powerpuff Girls season two, as a collectible range, having all four to sort of complete the master collection of this series, you know, there's only ever gonna be 150 master collections of this particular, uh, particular set. And now that's why I believe it's going to be the most valuable, just simply because of how rare it is. And, and if you've been in collectibles for any period of time, you'll know that it doesn't always have to be uh, the most popular to make it the most valuable. Because in, if you comp compare Powerpuff Girls to Batman, you know, Batman will always be more popular than Powerpuff Girls, you know. Obviously, there are going to be people out there that are diehard fans of Powerpuff Girls. And look, I've always enjoyed the, the program and the anime, uh, and the, sorry, the cartoon. Uh, it's always been really enjoyable to me. I enjoyed it when I was a kid. But the point behind it here is that Batman is a way bigger franchise. But in this example, when we compare the two values, we can see that the most valuable buy it now uh, for Batman right now is, a, uh, is the Eduardo Risso uh, Ultra Rare. Now, obviously the point behind this here is because of how many are minted. If you look at the collectible, so the Batman Season 1 um, Black and White as a collectible range, um, you could, there will always be 1,750 master collections, you know? That is the total amount of master collections that there'll ever be for this particular collectible. Now, that's not even considering the fact, if you look um, if you think about Vivi take a specific portion uh, for their own team uh, from each launch, you know, there's probably only 130 master collections that could ever be made of Cartoon Network Season 2. Now, if you have this, then congratulations. I mean, you you have, in my opinion, the most valuable collection there will ever be. Uh, because as Vivi continue to grow and scale, uh, I just don't see them ever bringing and coming down to this level of minted ever again. Uh, we saw... Um, within the Dragon Girl launch, that the lowest minter was 888. And, you know, I think that was low when you consider how many users there are. But when we have millions of users, I think we'll, we'll see sort of uh, in the thousands being their low, their low point in comparison to the amount of users they have. Um, so if you have this particular Donny collectible, then uh, 40,000 is, is incredibly cheap. This is going to be, uh, I think it will be the first ever seven figure um, collectible that Vivi ever have. I know that's speculation, but, uh, and um, this isn't financial advice at all, but uh, just, it is that rare. You know, at this current moment, it's only 11 on the market. Um, and so I just wanted to, if anyone hasn't seen this Powerpuff Girls Season 2 uh, collectible range, uh, I just want to give you a little view here. You can see you've got bubbles. And I thought it was interesting. You could have bought this for 12 99 you know, on the 7th of Jan when it came out. And it's now worth $3,200. So, what a, it's an insane return on investment, but um, I'm just gonna keep scrolling, to, uh, scrolling through. You've got Professor Utonium, which is really cool. Um, we've got him, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we've got Donny. Now, I wanna to touch upon the point that I made um, that it doesn't always have to be the most popular for it to be the most, to be the most desirable. In collectibles, rarer is always king. And what I'm gonna do is sort of reference some of my experience of in uh, Pokemon card trading to give you an idea behind this. Now. 
This is considered the holy grail of Pokemon collectibles. Now, it's the, uh, the Pikachu Illustrator. I'm not going to go through the history of it, but essentially, um, it is the most valuable. It was given it out in a sort of illustration event within Japan. Um, this was back in 1998. And... Its current value is $3 million a bite now. Now, obviously, that isn't a sold price, so I'd probably consider it more around the sort of 1.7 to 2.2 million, most likely. But this is a price range, I believe, is that, you know, I don't want to sell this price. But the point behind it is, is that there was only a finite amount of these ever created. I, I believe it was less than 100. You have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but in this particular example, yes, Pikachu is popular, but... This the reason this price is so high is because of how incredibly rare it is and what Pokemon went on to do. You know, and when you when you compare this to where Vivi is right now, and you look at the Donny, when if Vivi go on to you know have millions and millions of users, because of how rare this is, it will be such a stable part of Vivi's history uh, when they go on to uh, uh, to introduce even more seasons. And when we look look back in three, four, five years time. Um, this will be a very significant moment in Vivi's history um, because of how rare this collectible actually is. Um, and then what I want to do is also do the comparison here between the Illustrator and the first edition base set Charizard uh, and why popularity doesn't always indicate um, sort of value because the PSA 10 first edition Charizard, in my opinion, is one of the well the most well-known card collector collectibles in the world. You know, everybody has heard of Charizard, and if you've been, in, if you've heard of trading cards at all, and if you've been around Pokemon trading cards at all last year, uh, the first edition base at Charizard was the, the, it was the headline news. It was what everyone knew about. Now, if you go back to the Illustrator, this isn't always the mo the most well known card. If you're new to collecting or trading card collecting, you won't initially know that this is the most valuable. And there are other more valuable. Um, Collectibles and the first edition base at Charizard. There's a lot of trophy cards that are more more viable than the the first edition base, and 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 that's simply because they are rarer. And that's just highlight my point there that popularity doesn't always mean value. Um, you know, the rarer something is, the more valuable it will be. Uh, generally speaking, within collectibles. So I just thought it was an important point to make when we look at a sort of an external. Um, and then another thing I want to do as well is sort of talk about design as well. So. When you look at Donny, you know, and we, and we go for, you know, it's not the most, it wasn't even the most popular sort of character within Powerpuff Girls, yet it's driving uh, its price right now at $40,000 minimum buy-in. Now, it's important to remember this and take note of this, that design doesn't always equal popularity either. Um, it's, it's specifically when we're talking about a collectible, um, simply because rarer is king, and I, that's why I'm put. I'm using these external analogies to help sort of bring this point forward to you that uh, why I believe this collectible range will be so 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 difficult to attain uh, as we move forward, and why it will continue to be so valuable. Um, because if we look at the Chansey uh, first edition uh, PSA ten, you know this is a seventy five thousand dollar card, but Chansey isn't really the most popular Pokemon. And if you know Pokemon at all, it isn't, it is really isn't, but it's just that hard to get. Because if you, if we go into the PSA population report here, which is, if you don't know what PSA is, it's a, a card off, uh, or authentication company. Essentially, it's the sort of go-to standard for Pokemon uh, in terms of um, how, how the condition of a card. And that's based around borders, it's around centering, scratching on the hollows, whitening. But I'm not going to go into this too much. But the point I'm trying to make here is if we go over to... The PSA 10, there's only 48 in existence. That's in the whole world. So at 48, there will only ever, at this current moment in time, there's only 48 that exist uh, out of 1,298 submissions. So, and, and yet when you look at the PSA 9, there's 380, 337 in PSA 8. It, it's, it's an incredibly hard card to grade, which is reflected in their price. And, that, and that's simply why it's rarer you know, 40 in existence, that's why it's $75,000 buy-in. You know, Chansey is not the most popular Pokemon, but it is incredibly rare. Uh, so, and and if you want to have the first edition uh, PSA 10 collectibles, then that's why, you know, if you want the full set, then you're going to have to pay up for this because it's that hard to get hold of. And the other one I want to sort of reference here as well is the Dark Magneton. Um, it's not the most popular Pokemon, but if you can see the hollow pattern, uh, within the background of his dark uh, dark magneton, it's notorious for print lines uh, because of just how easy they are to see. Um, within the actual when you, when when someone PSA uh, when a PSA author uh, author and 
author, I can't even say that word, uh, PSA authentication, sorry. Um, when they grade a card, they look at the surface scratching. So um, if we go into the population report here for the first edition Magneton, there's only 53 in existence. You know, I can't even find one for buy it now on, on eBay anywhere because of how rare it is. And so that's why I'm, I'm bringing this point forward here and why I believe this collectible range is going to be that expensive and that viable moving forward simply because of how rare they are. You know, 150 uh, collectibles will only ever exist for this. So if we get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty 20 million users, there will only ever be 100, 150 master sets, um, which is absolutely insane. So if you have this collection, I just want to say congratulations. You are a original OG of uh, within Vivi. And I wish I was uh, had even known about Vivi before, um, within January, before this year, because uh, this would have definitely been a collectible that I would have gone for. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this video. Um, I hope this sort of justifies and makes sense to you that uh, popularity doesn't always mean value. And we, we're already seeing this within um, within the NFT collectible range, within Vivi, uh, and it's reflective in their prices. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's made sense to you. If it has, then consider dropping a like and subscribing if you're new around here. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.